If I were to ask you just to sit in that chair for 72 hours and not fall asleep, I can 1,000% oh, guarantee you will fail. It's no longer a If anyone else had told me they wanted to try and go for this record in this body of water, of <laughs> I'd have thought they were joking. It just doesn't make sense. I don't think that makes sense. No human has ever done what he's looking to do. When we're on this kind of journey of something that is high performance no matter what, you know, obviously that's gotta come at a cost because relationships will suffer, friendships will suffer, everything you can imagine socially will suffer for this one goal of achieving something that shouldn't be possible. And you've gotta be right with yourself to say, this is worth it. That's why it matters to have people around you that love you and understand what you're doing. I'm, I'm very aware that this whole process, I'm becoming a better swimmer, but, but probably not as good a human, boyfriend, son, brother. So uh, when Ross does his swims, it takes a lot of time and dedication. Just to do something in a world what's not been done, it's, it's hard enough to, to find something to do, never mind do it. So yeah, it's good. It's good to yeah, look up to him and you know, raise your own bar. As a sort of athlete and as a sports scientist, it, it was a failure. And uh, that, that bugged me for a while. It really did. I can. How does that guarantee you will fail? Currently, records for long distance swimming, you're looking at around 160 kilometers. Stroke after stroke after stroke, non-stop, no break, no sleep, no rest. Since 9 a.m., two days ago now. The medics had to call it. He was basically going off, going off a cliff edge down into hypothermia. And they threw not that water. In the weeks and months that sort of passed, I came to the realization that I think a failure is, is only really a failure if you give up. Because on the surface, it might be 50, 60 or 70 hours, but in reality, Loch Ness never ended. This is, this is it continued. Ross was introduced to us following Loch Ness. He was really in search of understanding more into the reasons why he couldn't quite train at the capacity that he was used to training at. The swim itself had a massive effect on Ross's kidney function. It causes your red blood cells to decrease. We fix that basically through simple supplementation. So there's a debate in open water swimming which still rages on now, which is kind of wetsuit versus no wetsuit. And there's a time and a place for each. And, and certainly in Loch Ness, I wouldn't have survived 53 hours without one. Whereas with this one, it's, it's a new suit of armour. You know, it, it's new tech. I think what's so amazing is when I come up with these ideas, 99.999% of companies' people would just go, that's not going to happen and we don't want any part of it. Gymshark aren't like that. They are that zero, zero, you know, one percent, and it 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 means a lot. It, it genuinely does. So Olympic swimming, especially 50 meter pool, kind of the pinnacle of speed, endurance, power. Very short. No one is doing what Ross is doing. There is no championship. There's no medal. There's no big event or big stage. It's just him on his own. It's kind of one man against a huge objective. 
with a swim of this scale, I always say it definitely exists outside of the realms of conventional sport. To look for help or answers, it's always made sense to just consult some of my military friends who just come out with these just pearls of wisdom. It's the unexpected, the things which you didn't think could happen, which are the, are the most dangerous to you. If you've already experienced some of those bad things happening to you, and you've already failed at some things, then actually just take them in your stride. People talk about sort of, you know, the act of sort of creating almost like a furnace type environment where you incrementally increase the pressure, increase the heat, increase the stress and allow them to deal with that. And eventually, you know, out from the furnace, you know, in, in our case, comes a Royal Marine Commander who's able to deal with all the stresses of a combat situation. For an elite athlete like Ross, I, I, I imagine it's a very similar sort of perspective. There was this one saying specifically that I always loved that they said that, Ross, you're an athlete, so you're used to performing at your best when you feel at your best, but we're Royal Marines. We're used to performing at our best when we feel at our worst. And, and it always resonated with me because I think with any long swim, when you're 30, 40, 50 hours in, you're definitely not at your best. This is not a swimming event where, you know, after three lengths or so many minutes, it finishes. Or it's not a sports game where, you know, you know, win or lose, it ends at this point. He doesn't know when it ends and he doesn't know how it's going to go. It's completely unscripted and it's completely unbounded. That makes it a significantly more challenging event to go into. So this is Lake Tresemino. We're here at the minute, which is the beach area, the camp. And then we come off the beach and then we swim to this first island here. The islands basically provide these natural landmarks, these buoys that we can swim around, but this is where things get a little bit interesting. For health and safety reasons, we give the islands that we're swimming around at least 200 meters clearance. Basically adding, it could be a kilometer, it could be even more to every single lap that is then unaccounted for because the World Open Water Swimming Association, they take the route as close as possible. So that's the official route that they're gonna ratify but in reality, I would have swum a lot more and done it the hard way. That's pretty tough to swallow, but we're, we're here now and there the cards were dealt. The formation of resilience, the ability to bounce back, is the product of experience in failure. In Loch Ness, you know, the enemy, the, the, the villain was, was hyperthermia, it was, it was cellulitis caused by the wetsuit which you had to wear because of the cold. So ultimately, you know, the, the real villain was, was, was the cold, whereas here is, is very different. So my name is Dr. Darwin Clip. I'm one of the doctors that's been brought along uh, to support Ross in his uh, world record attempt. Dr. Thomas Hall, just call me Tom. I'm a doctor in the NHS. When we talk of numbers of 30 degrees and 31 degrees, we often talk about it in ambient temperature, so when we enjoy the weather. But within the water, it becomes a completely different animal. 26 to 28, two degrees, not too bad. That implies that it's a linear problem, but it's not that it exponentially gets harder as the temperature goes up. His ability to sweat will completely change. His ability to take on fluids will completely change. The challenges to his metabolism and his muscle will completely change. All those things are working against him. They recommend the top end that's safe is 31 degrees. So this thick clay-like substance is essentially your only line of defense against the sun. After that, it's not safe anymore. You're not gonna win it on day one, but, but you could lose it. No one's forcing Ross to do this. He's, he's willingly doing this. I'll swim with no breaks. No, no human has ever done. No sleep. What he's looking for. You can imagine. So no touching land. And it's one dollar. For as long as I possibly and, 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 can. Uh, it doesn't know when it is. It's just the end. It's no longer with breaks. It's got
Un po' coperto stamattina e in prospettiva. C'è il 20% di probabilità di temporali in provincia di Perugia. Ciò, tuttavia, segnerà la conclusione di eventuali condizioni umide per le prossime due settimane. Poiché una robusta ondata di caldo è pronta ad avvolgere l'Italia e la più ampia regione del Mediterraneo meridionale. Anticipa le temperature che salgono a un torrido 45 gradi. Consigliamo vivamente di cercare un riparo al chiuso e di astenersi dall'esposizione al sole per garantire il proprio benessere. Looking at the swim and trying to unpack what actually happened, obviously first the results, not, not ideal, not, not what I had envisioned and that, that oh, it's, a, it's a tough one to accept, it, it, definitely, it definitely stinks, um, but we as a team we, we just prepared for absolutely everything or, or we thought we had, the, the one thing that we'd missed off the list was preparing for a freak heat wave sent from the Sahara. Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd never experienced a heat like that. It was completely foreign to my English physiology. The, the only way I can describe it uh, was just like swimming in, in a giant cup of tea that was just being shaken up as well, especially for that first day. Doing great, we're just going to slowly take the electrolytes off, okay? Mm -hmm. How are you feeling otherwise? Any, anything new? How's your tummy? Good. It's just, yeah, tummy's actually all right. It's just cramp, it just won't go away. Still in the lower legs, yeah? Yeah. You have to slowly increase your uh, salt levels, okay? The whole time that you're feeding off the boat and treading water, you're burning energy, you're exhausting yourself, but there's, there's no progress, there's no forward momentum. Because ultimately, the longer you take to feed, the longer the swim is going to take, and therefore that's more hours under the sun in this extreme condition. So Rossi's feeds are very, very quick. Ideally around about 30 seconds, but definitely no longer than three minutes. As an athlete, so often you, you just want metrics and, and records because you're an athlete. That's kind of extrinsic motivation. That's why you do it. That's the goal. Whereas as a sports scientist, it sounds so strange and, and I know it sounds so twisted, but it's kind of nice to know what heat stroke feels like and what hypothermia feels like. And, and I know that sounds so strange, but theory and philosophy and and the sort of academic side of things will only take you so far where there's just this practical application of it we have got six minutes so but i'll do i'll do i'll do glasses change um we'll do glasses change you want to do it yeah ross you ready ross, ross. And people talk about body and mind, they're just the same thing. I mean, the, the mental strength to do the things which he wants to challenge himself on, for me, extraordinary. Good? Yep. Oh, what's that? Just a bit of vaseline for your shoulder, oh, okay? Thank you. How's the tongue? Good. Let's have a look. Good. Stomach? Uh, not bad. Good. How do you drink? Um, I'm here till one in the morning, one, half one. Then we'll have a shift change. Hessel, come on board, you know, and follow a similar protocol. So we're working on a shift pattern of six hours on, six hours off. Incrementally, over his lifetime, he has done more and more demanding things and he's found that his body can sustain that and his mind is able to deal with, with those for what other people would think are just quite extraordinary, perhaps inhuman challenges. For him, he knows he can do some of these things and so he's not really put off. He's prepared to take them head on. People would just give up. Oh yeah, it's too hard. But Ross ain't like that. He's a different breed, so it's a... Ross could never fail with what he does because he's already on the edge of where the human body should go, way beyond where the human body should go, and he's never going to not try. He's trying to keep his body temperature within a very strict range. That's 36 degrees to 37 and a half. That's what the body needs to function properly. If you stray away from that, even 38, 39, that's when you start to get unwell. And the same the other end. So just tiny changes make all the difference. like myself and the Mueller observer, Thomas, it was physically really hard. Like we were kind of glad we had six hour shifts to get off the boat. And I was like, Jesus, thanks for the God, I'm off that boat. I, you know, we were feeling for Ross, but we're like, we're suffering. It's just nice to swim. Yeah. That, honestly, that first 18 hours. Yeah, Look at it, it's, it's, it's glass. Oh, no. The sun's coming out yeah. for you, Dave. So sweet. Today's gonna be a good day. Water. It's hard work. Yeah. 
Today's going to be a good day, Ross. It's, it's really admirable that what he did. That's the true sign of a top endurance guy who's able to evaluate and say, well, I, I don't want to be a full casualty. Maybe another hour of swimming I could be, but I don't want to be. So even though he spent 24 hours in the hospital, another hour could have been as close as that. Another hour could have been fatal, to be honest with you. It's that dangerous. It's been a few weeks now since the swim, and I'm still trying to process and unpack exactly what went on and um, this is, this is going to sound so strange but there's a story in ancient Greek mythology that, that has really helped me process the whole thing and, and it's called the myth of Sisyphus. So Sisyphus was a king and he was, he was so intelligent he was able to outsmart the gods. When Sisyphus came to die, Zeus was so annoyed that he just basically said, I'm going I'm to punish you. I'm going to think of some horrible punishment uh, just to, just to basically prove that I'm better than you and that you've annoyed me. And he said, you're going to roll this boulder up a hill for eternity. And as it gets to the top of the hill, it's just going to roll back down. You're just going to be doomed to repeat this, this futile task, just constantly going up and down. But then, and I love this, Albert Camus, who was a French philosopher, he basically said, but Sisyphus was able to outsmart the gods one more time. And he was able to do this if you imagine that Sisyphus was smiling as he rolled the boulder up the hill and it just rolled back down. And because, and I, I love this particular bit, he just said, because the struggle alone is enough to fill a man's heart. And I think for me, that resonates so much because records are nice, absolutely. But in reality, it's just, it's the process, it's the struggle, it's the training. That, that alone has been amazing. That alone was its own reward. So, People asking, what's next? Will you do another swim? And I just, I just can't help but smile and just go, absolutely. Because to quote Albert Camus, myth of Sisyphus, the struggle alone is enough to fill a man's heart. Things will go wrong, they just will. So you've got to create people that can deal with the failure, not create people that don't fail.